Welcome leaders. Welcome to Embodied Leadership. I'm Ellen Gilbert. I'm a Sacred Feminine Leadership Coach. I'm so happy to be here with you this morning. How are we feeling? How do we sleep? <laughs> you might be able to tell I did not sleep so well last night. I was up for a good two hours in the night and it wasn't even a full moon. So I've been like Sitting with that this morning, slowly waking up and asking myself how I want to move forward with this. Giving myself lots of compassion and it really steered me toward what I wanted to talk about today, what I wanted to practice with you all today. And I think today we're going to practice coming out of the fawn response. So we talked last week about going from shut down to show up. So that was really working with the dorsal response in polyvagal theory, which is depression, shutdown, um, numbing, and how to pull ourselves out of that hole, so to speak. And today I wanna to talk about fawning, what it is, and how we can regulate ourselves back into sovereignty. Because with the fawn response, which is an extension of the dorsal response um, it's really about shutting down in a particular way it's when we shut down our sovereignty in order to make ourselves more amenable to others so I think we all know what the fawn response feels like in our body whether it looks like people pleasing or pandering to others ideologies or trying to make ourselves smaller or more uh, palatable for others approval and acceptance um, women especially we've been conditioned in the patriarchy to be into a fawn response so it's a very interesting crossover of our natural evolutionary nervous system survival response and our societal patriarchal conditioning so it's this crossroads of the two and that really goes for pretty much everything. We can see how our ego evolved biologically to save us and protect us, keep us safe. And then also how our society formed as a byproduct of our ego, which was rooted in scarcity. So, and then our ego further became conditioned by society, whether it's internalized patriarchy, internalized capitalism, uh, white supremacy culture, colonialism, all of these isms <laughs> and pieces of society that then fed into our ego and cultivated our sense of who we are in relationship to the world and how we need to behave in order to stay safe. And the fawn response again, it's just such an example of this crossroads. And, you know, as a sacred feminine leadership coach, I help my clients regulate their nervous systems so that they can be more in alignment with their sovereign self. Because your sovereign self is your highest self, is your intuition, is your wisest self. And it's the part of you that has the most open heart, open mind, wants the best for you, for humanity, for the planet. And I really believe when we can access and make decisions and live from this space, from our sovereign self, that we can live in alignment, we can live with less suffering, which is really the goal here, and we can move toward our vision. And when you move toward your big, beautiful vision, it's not just for you. When it's truly in alignment with your highest self, that big, beautiful vision is for all of us. And we can really sense the ways that our big, beautiful vision benefits and uplifts all of humanity and the planet and the cosmos, because it's why your soul is here. It's why you incarnated in this body on this planet at this time. And, you know, maybe this is a worldview you can hold lightly and have some perspective around, but just noticing today have you noticed what it feels like to be in your sovereign self? Have you had some experiences in your life? <sighs> really feeling your intuition. 
and trusting it. And what happened as a result? What did it feel like when you were in that space of your sovereign self, your highest self, your wisest self, your future self? Maybe we can just invite her in now, them in as a felt experience in the body. And if you're like, what the hell does that mean? Maybe you can get curious and invite in, what would it feel like to inhabit my sovereign self? And if you need a visual, what does this part of myself look like? What would I look like if I lived my life in alignment with my sovereignty? And then what would that feel like? So we can kind of reverse engineer it. We're just going to start to scrub as we play with this visualization slash sensation. We're going to start to bring it into our 3D reality, just scrubbing into the collarbones right here this morning, giving your shoulder ridge a gentle squeeze. And we call this a hold when we just kind of bring a nice steady grip. not squeezing, just holding gently, trusting that you know the right pressure for your body, you feel it down through the hand, and then this is a drag when we sort of let that pressure drag down across the shoulder ridge down through the collarbones. Go ahead and shake out that hand on the side you're working. Just noticing if any energy is moving through that hand. So we continue to hold, drag, and just scrub along the collarbones, shoulder ridge this morning. So we're inviting in the sensations of our sovereign self, our wisest self. And I like to get under bra straps, under any clothing, just to make that direct contact with skin to skin, which activates the mammalian caregiving complex in the brain, because you're giving care to yourself. And it's what newborn babies need when they're born, when we do skin to skin, it produces oxytocin. Starting to bring it up now into the side of the neck, just doing some holds, some drags and some scrubbing. And I noticed with the fawn response in particular, it's like, I don't need like the vigorous, rigorous scrubbing. Like I need like, just that gentle pressure. And you can notice where your ego's at this morning. Sometimes we really cling to the experience. We try to like push through the sensation by like scrubbing really intensely. And you can notice there's a push-pull energy we would say in Buddhism, right? There's like a there's like a an ego activation there that wants to like get rid of a certain sensation or bring in a different sensation. But instead, we're really just practicing Being with, being with body, being with our felt present experience. And I like to get in a little, a little jaw scrub here so you can just start playing with that thumb into the ear and down into the jaw on that side. Type in the comments what, what you're feeling, if it feels good. Um, or let me
me know later what you're noticing or just notice for yourself. On this side that you're working, for me it's the right side. What are you noticing? I'm noticing so much clearing in this right side and I can really feel it through my hands like the the energy shifting. I haven't even touched my hand or my arm. I've only worked my shoulder, my chest, collarbone, and neck and jaw. And I can feel it alive into this hand. I mean, what does that show you? This is powerful work. We're work doing the work of being present. So many people say they can't meditate. It's like, have you tried meditating in the body? Your body is right here to anchor you into this present moment. Okay, just noticing where that wants to go. I kind of want to give a little scrub into my palm now. If you've been doing this embodied leadership work for a while, Maggie feels relief. Oh, beautiful one. Thank you for sharing. Love that. We're going to scrub into the mounds of the hand on the side. Our goal here is to open the hand like this. So the fingers are reaching back, but that can be hard depending on our nervous system. <laughs> if you're experiencing fawning, people pleasing, internalized patriarchy, you might have a death grip on life. Let's scrub that out. In between the fingers and then the back of the palm. And then we can shake that out. Ooh, noticing the two sides. Profound, profound. Every time I've been out of practice for a while, it's like truly all I have to do is practice to be like, oh damn, this work, it's so good. All right, we're gonna take it to the other side. So just getting in here, kind of moving things around, noticing, I'm noticing, oh, I'm waking up, thawing out, softening. It's more rigid on this side. You can feel with your fingers the quality of your tissues in your fascia. How dense, how immovable. And after a night of not very good sleep, I can tell you, it's, it's more like concrete. Getting into your precious heart. A little heart massage here in the middle. Bringing in the breath. with your experience. Bring in now some holds. If your mind wanders, you can always come back to the hand that's doing the holding and the part that's being held. Balancing your awareness between these two points. There really is enough here to rest your mind on. And bringing in some gentle drags. your intuition guide you if you let that left hand go just noticing where on the shoulder ridge you might be needing to focus your drag to really feel it release in that left hand sometimes I grab all the way back and around to the shoulder blade the scapula and then just very gently over and down towards the heart Beautiful. Just noticing now on that left side, is it feeling more balanced? Is it feeling more cleared? We scrub into that left hand, into the mounds of the hand. <sighs> Rolling out that neck. How are we feeling, fam? Getting embodied? 
You're so courageous. Back of the hand. It's not easy to be truly embodied. It's vulnerable. <laughs> it is like the real, real. This is the real work, y'all. I like to give a little squeeze between the fingers into the webbing of the hands. Ooh, that's so nice right now. Feels so good. We're just gonna take it finger by finger. Imagine if you tended your nervous system like a garden every day. So that it didn't take some big activation for you to begin tending it, but rather you were always in a state of nervous system maintenance, of embodiment maintenance. So that when the triggers come for you in your specific ego way, not only do you have the resources to, and the practices to fall back on in the moment, but you also have a widened window of tolerance. It's like going to the gym for your nervous system. You have a greater vagal tone. So polyvagal theory, which is what we're talking about here with the dorsal, the sympathetic, and the ventral, dorsal being depression, and shut down and fawn response, sympathetic being fight, fight or flight, and ventral being well-being, homeostasis, um, social connection, creativity, sovereignty, highest self. Um, this is all based on the vagus nerve, which is the wandering nerve in the body that connects to our gut, our nervous system, and it's what we're really working with here in order to bring regulation from any of these states, including the fawn response, which we're talking about today. And you can actually increase your vagal tone by doing these practices. And what we want is a great, great vagal tone in that nerve so that we can handle life's many triggers and what i have found by combining nervous system workouts with shadow work i am able to have a greater vagal tone and be better prepared for those triggers when they naturally arise and now i can see in others and i'm a coach so i'm sitting with people in sessions a lot who are triggered. So all of these experiences have given me this unique insight into the ways that we repeat triggers. We repeat our shadow. We repeat these universal lessons, as Gabby Bernstein calls them, when they keep popping up like whack-a-moles. And rather than really doing the work of processing them, of understanding our shadow and why universe is giving us this unique opportunity to work through and heal something, we unconsciously try to numb, escape, fawn, which would be like fitting ourselves into a box or into a mold of what we think is going to get us out of the situation as fast as possible. We do everything, we do all of these other nervous system states except get into our sovereignty. And because the sovereignty is vulnerable, but these practices, these simple practices help like armor and shield and protect us in that vulnerability. So it's really cool. So let's take a moment now, scrubbing the face. <sighs> Deep sigh, make it audible. Big breath in, open mouth, audible. <sighs> scrubbing into that jaw. 
you'll start to notice as you work with your body, your patterns. Your patterns in the mind and the consciousness, in the shadow realms and the ego triggers, but also your patterns in your body. Where did those experiences get stored for you? For some of us, it's the jaw. For others, it's the hips. I mean, for all of us, it's all of these. And we probably have our unique patterning that it's helpful to get to notice. I just want you now to kind of put a hand where you're noticing that patterning or where this morning you're feeling like, oh, there's been some storage. There's been some emotional hoarding in this area. Bring a hand there, bring a hold there. And through that hand, can we send it a clearing energy? Like if you were gonna get in there, Marie Kondo, and purge and redecorate and clean it up, <laughs> what would that feel like? Just sending that through the hand. For me, it's been my glutes lately. Really bringing in, inviting in through the hand, just this energy of release. Mm, I feel it in my heart too. This letting go, the surrender. And if you want to open up your earth star chakra, you can grow some roots down the base of your root chakra, your tailbone, your sits bones, your pelvic floor, deep down into the earth below you, about a foot or a foot and a half into the ground, to the earth soil, finding your earth star chakra, Maybe it looks like a gemstone or a big boulder you can wrap your roots around. Getting into this visualization to help us discharge further from these areas of the body where we've stored we've stored our particular nervous system response our triggers, our ego stuff. And the earth can take this for us. And she recycles it. So dropping it down those roots into the earth. discharging your adrenals, any built up hormones that are creating toxicity, pain in the body, adrenaline, cortisol, any build up of these energies that have brought you out of balance, just discharging them through your roots. Letting them go, letting them drain out the body. Take a few deep breaths in through the nose, out through the nose. Noticing the sensations in your body. Do let go and release. 
you can let go of that hold and begin to just scrub intuitively any areas where you're feeling particularly affected, particularly tight this morning. Just bring some gentle, ooh, something popped. Some gentle touch, companionship, partnership, and care to these parts. Maybe with your eyes still closed, just noticing like what you want to say to them. What they need to hear from you. Maybe it's just a simple, it's all going to be okay. I like to bring in some squeezes <laughs> to help discharge that energy. Beautiful. You can give it some nice pats. Depending on the body part we're working. <laughs> heart center. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. We're going to bring to mind your inner fawn. Maybe she's your inner maiden, the patriarchalized maiden you were conditioned into. Or the child that had a really tough time. Just get a sense of her. The ways that you fawned, the ways that you molded yourself into something other than your sovereign self in order to receive approval, belonging, validation. Safety. I want you to ask this part what they really need. And I want you to offer this part another way you can help meet this need from a place of your sovereign self so they can be off duty. If they hear you and accept this offer, you can go ahead and exchange a gesture of goodwill, maybe a hug, a gift. And if they don't, making a commitment to them that moving forward your highest self is going to help reassure them that they can be off duty, they can rest, they can surrender. They can receive wherever you're at with this being just offering them a gesture, a gift, a hug, a kiss on the forehead, a promise.
promise to return. Coming back to the present moment. Blink your eyes open, take a deep breath. Let it go. Beautiful ones, I love to hear what your fawning self needed. My fawning self needed validation. I'm going to be working with that energy of validation, I think, this week and understanding better how a regulated sovereign self can meet that need and what's really under that need. So I invite you to do the same. Keep tending your nervous system like a garden. This work is never over, but it gives so many rewards. And I mean, truly, it is enough to feel regulated and to feel present. I think it's what we're all longing for. Not to mention the, the compassion, the care, and the love that we can offer ourselves. The acceptance and belonging we offer ourselves. Which is, I really believe, what we're all looking for in external places. And in that way work is the work and it is always worth it so let us know in the comments did this make you feel vulnerable you're not alone let us know your takeaways what you'll be working through with your inner fawn this week see you here next week same place same time have an embodied week sending love to all of you thanks for joining